Okay, so here's what we're going to do in professional and social responsibility. I'm going to talk super fast because they say that the average listener can listen three times as fast as the fastest speaker. So we're going to, but that's not a fact you need to know for the test. Okay, we're going to identify project, professional and social obligations. How to uh, ensure individual integrity. Identify ways to contribute to project management knowledge base. Enhance professional competence and list ways to promote stakeholders. Okay, so PMI has a code of ethics and they're very serious about the code of ethics and they will ask you questions in regard to the code of ethics. I'm not sure how that fits into the five process groups, but do make sure that you read and understand the code of ethics. Uh, you will actually have to sign up for the code of ethics. You, know, you will have to click the box, but don't make it like those end user license agreements on Microsoft where you may be clicking to be Bill Gates' towel boy because there's a whole lot of words and a whole lot of numbers and you just want to get whatever going. So, but do read the PMI code of ethics because basically um, it has to do with the kind of projects you undertake, the solutions provided, the management of costs, the impact on the performing organization, any impacted environments or groups, dollars spent or whatever your denomination is, and the vendors and contractors hired. So make sure you understand the social and, and um, professional obligations of project managers. So basically there are four core values and those are responsibility, respect, fairness and honesty so make sure you know those because you know in a four question multiple choice test which this is going to be for the pmp exam um you know if there are four things you want to know if they take out one and throw in a wrong one which one is wrong so make sure you know those four and then the code of ethics has both aspirational standards which are a little bit more um difficult to measure and then mandatory standards so again the aspirational standards are the things that you strive to uphold and um, because it's not easy to measure, it's still expected that you adhere to them. And again, they're not optional, they're just harder to measure. And the mandatory standards are firm kind of fixed requirements and they limit or prohibit the practitioner behavior. Now, um, again, there's disciplinary procedures and you know, before the PM, okay, there's our five minute break over. Okay, before the PMI's ethics review committee. So if you uh, don't hold up to one of those standards. But, and again, remember that PMI has a very um, high level of ideals in their standards. So for instance, they say don't bribe or take bribes. And obviously that's a good business practice because you shouldn't bribe people and you shouldn't take bribes. But in some Central Central and South American countries, that's the only way to do business. So, you know, I've, I've had people again in the oil patch tell me, well, Kathy, I can't do business in Mexico unless I pay the federales and this one and that one and whatever, you know, to get my commodity through their various checkpoints. And, you know, the problem is always if you pay a bribe, what do you do if they don't follow through with what they say they're going to do? You know, you can't then go to the police or PMI or somebody and go, hey, I paid that bribe and they didn't let me through or give me the stamp or whatever. So, again, these are, you know, some of these standards are very pie in the sky, but actual business practices are, are problematic. Again, they ask for it, the uh, responsibility, responsibility aspect of the aspirational standards. Again, uh, project management professionals are held to the highest level of aspirational standards. And obviously, as an organization, PMI wants you to be the best person you can be because, you know, the old one bad apple just ruins the whole bunch kind of philosophy. So they don't want project management professionals to do unfortunate things, especially that draw attention and get um, you know media in their disfavor. So again, the aspirational standards are society, public safety, and the environment, and making decisions based on the best interests of these three groupings. So again, in a four question multiple choice, make sure you understand that these three. And again, you want to accept only those assignments that are consistent with your background experience skills and qualifications, which doesn't mean if you were, say, a NASA aerospace engineer that you can't move over into the healthcare uh, management arena because you've got the 
PMP credential behind you, but it means don't say you have a medical background if all you've ever done is practice medicine on your family. So, because you want to always be very truthful. And again, do what we say we will do is the commitment undertaken. So, again, aspirational standards are owning and correcting errors and omissions promptly. Again, errors are communicated immediately to the appropriate body and accountability is accepted along with resulting consequences. So if you mess up, fess up. And again, you want to ensure proprietary and confidential information is protected and you want to uphold ethical code and holding each other accountable to it. So, you know, you don't take questions, you know, you don't try to memorize if, if you, if you have a photographic memory, you don't want to try to memorize a lot of the PMP exam and then communicate that outside the room. Okay, and then responsibility mandatory standards include being informed of regulations and legal requirements. So absence of knowledge is not a defense. Um, you want to uphold the policies, rules, regulations, and laws that govern your work uh, in professional and volunteer activities. So in other words, you're held to the same level of responsibility, whether you're being paid or not. And again, you need to report unethical or illegal conduct to the appropriate management and if necessary to those affected by the conduct. So, you know, if somebody tries to bribe you, you need to pass that along. And I mean, not only because that's probably um, good cover because, you know, then they might come up with all kinds of crazy stories about you if they were willing to do that and you were not willing to take the bribe, but also because it's just the right thing to do. So they realize other people might be subject to that. Again, ethics complaints, uh, part of your responsibility as a project management professional uh, includes reporting violations of the PMI code of ethics and professional conduct to other project managers. So again, you've got to bring the violations to the attention of the appropriate body for resolution. You've got to file complaints when they are substantiated by facts and you've got to pursue disciplinary action against an individual who retaliates, um, you know, the kind of the whistleblower law. So in other words, if, if, you know, someone is the, you know, the person who raised the complaint, then you can't let them be affected negatively for doing the right thing. Okay. And so respect, and obviously you have to respect yourself in order to command the respect and provide respect for others. So, Again, resources entrusted to project managers may include people, money, reputation, the safety of others, and nat natural or environmental resources. So you've got to be informed about the norms and customs of others and avoid engaging behaviors they might consider disrespectful. So various different cultures have various different things that are not spoken about and in fact even English words in British English that we use as just regular words are sometimes considered foul words. So you've got to be very careful. Um, again, you want to listen to others' point of view and seek to understand them. Again, if you have a conflict or a disagreement and PMI is very big on getting to the root cause, get to the root cause and solve the problem and then conduct yourself in a professional manner, even if it's not reciprocated. And again, mandatory standards for respect, negotiating in good faith. So none of this good cop, bad cop kind of, you know, I'm going to go to my manager and talk to my manager when you're just really going to have a cigarette break or something. Um, again, not exercising the power of their expertise or position to influence the decisions or actions of others in order to benefit yourself personally at someone else's expense. So, you know, none of the, you know, none of the things that are often frowned upon like nepotism. Um, again, no abusing other people, um, you know, verbally, physically, in any other way, and respecting the property rights of others. So in terms of fairness, the, uh, the aspirational standards are acting impartially and objectively. So you've got to be free from any kind of self-interest, prejudice, or favoritism. Um, aspirational standards include demonstrating transparency in deci the decision-making process, um, constantly re-examining personal impartiality and objectivity, taking corrective action as appropriate, 
and providing equal access to information to all those authorized to have that information. So for instance, once you have a bidder's conference, then everyone who's expressed interest in bidding on the contract has to have equal access to any questions that are asked or, or answered um, of the project team or of the, the proposal team that answers the questions. And again, providing equal opportunities to qualified candidates. Okay. So, uh, in terms of mandatory standards of fairness, uh, proactively and fully disclosing any real or potential conflict of interest uh, to the appropriate stakeholders, and if you've got a real or potential conflict of interest, refrain from engaging in the decision-making process. So basically, rec recuse yourself when you have a conflict. And if there is a real uh, or potential conflict, participate only when there's full disclosure, that you've gotten approval and there's a mitigation plan and you've got consent of the stakeholders to proceed that is obtained. Um, honesty. So in a, we want to be very, very honest with the project managers. Um, and in all of these standards, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So once you prove yourself to be dishonest, then you're never going to, it's going to be a whole lot harder to prove your honesty um, if they can cite one act of dishonesty. So you want to understand the truth. You want to be truthful in communications and conduct. You want to provide accurate information in a timely manner. And you want to make commitments and promises implied or explicit in good faith. And again, you want to strive to create an environment in which others feel safe to tell the truth. So again, you know, no um, coming down on the whistleblowers. Again, in terms of mandatory standards, you don't want to condone behavior to deceive others um, in terms of making misleading or false statements, stating half-truths, providing information out of context, withholding information that if known would render your statements as misleading or incomplete, or not engaging in dishonest behavior with the intention of personal gain at the expense of another. So in terms of, you know, if, if you told the contractor something early on that would make them stop the project, you've got to tell them that. You can't just say, oh, well, they don't need to know this, or they said they didn't want to hear this till three weeks from now. You've really got to tell them when that information is the most, um, you know, when, when it first comes to the fore. And again, you want to ensure individual integrity, that you have personal integrity on the project. So in other words, reporting the truth, regardless of the negative consequences, deal with conflict directly, treat everyone respectfully, avoid discriminating, follow rules and regulations governing the project, report unethical or dishonest behavior, don't factor personal gains into the decision in any way, and always doing the right thing and following the right process. So, you know, think of yourself as a project manager, you know, with the halo, the clouds open up, the rays come down upon you, that you should be the very best person that you can be. You know, assume it's all on tape and it's going to be shown at the Jumbotron at your local um, sports stadium. Again, in terms of your own integrity, Obviously, don't divulge company information to unauthorized parties, respect intellectual property rights, follow the PMI code of ethics and professional conduct. And again, this is found on the PMI website. It changes from time to time. And when it changes, they have you recheck the box. So always make sure that before you check the box, you read that code of ethics. So, you know, understand these integrity questions because you will be tested um, in terms of professional and ethical responsibility on some of these uh, multiple choice questions. So here's a, a business scenario and um, you guys can read that. You don't need me to read it, but I think you can read it faster than I can read it. Okay, so what should you do as the project manager? Have to decline. Yeah, you, know, you, definitely don't, you don't take oh. it. You need to talk to someone. Right. And the answer is, you deny the request to pay 250. Yep. And of course, you want to make sure that you achieve success, but paying the official money would be considered a bribe. And what did I just say about bribes? That you know, if you bribe them and they don't do what they said, then you're really at luck. 
because you know you don't you can't go to bribes or us and go hey i paid this bribe what are you gonna do about it so <laughs> always be good okay another thing that pmi wants you to do is contribute to the project management knowledge base because obviously project management is always changing and growing hopefully getting better and bigger and more effective so sharing the best practices with uh, project managers in your project organization and think about these kind of things if you can really document them or if you know say if you do a presentation or some kind of pitch think of that as going towards your pdus um, again mentoring junior team members on project management related topics so it seems like you guys are kind of uh, the lead people on this project management education so the time that you take to mentor people um be they your subordinates or even maybe your superiors you know that all counts towards pdus um in terms of you know if you were to write a paper or you know do a blog or something um if you were to do kind of a lessons learned analysis of past project data and compile metrics to be used within the organization you know all of the stuff is contributing to the project management knowledge base and it's all good in terms of getting potential project development units for you and of course uh, participating in volunteer activities with pmi because of course they have to get credit for that because they want people to volunteer to do things and for instance you might see if there's a local pmi chapter not only because they often have interesting speakers and stuff but if you're ever looking for people to hire that's a good social way to know people um before you you know might say oh you know come in and, and apply for this job again you want to enhance um professional competence so in terms of uh, yourself you want to look at your strengths and weaknesses um you might want to have a senior manager to mentor you know you or to mentor people who aren't very competent not everybody knows everything so maybe if procurements is your weakness because you haven't done that very often or maybe personnel stuff is something that you've avoided like the plague um you know you might want to work with somebody again you want to actively look for ways to apply people's project management knowledge on projects again read project management books because either you're a project management nerd or just because you want to get some new ideas um you want to maybe listen or participate in webinars online learning efforts and again pdu material Join your local PMI chapter and discuss things with other project managers, obviously within the bounds of not sharing proprietary information. And again, discuss challenges faced on projects with other project managers. Okay, so here is another business. This would be discussed with the project manager. You have to report it. Uh huh. Yeah. So, in terms of how you should handle this, get in touch with your old project sponsor and management and communicate your find findings verbally and in writing and this is um we'll talk about various types of communication but this is definitely a case where you probably want to have formal communication and then um you know you and the sponsor should communicate your findings and again according to the code of ethics this is what you need to do uh, in terms of you know what governs you okay so the next thing you want to do is you want to promote stakeholder collaboration and again, you want to encourage stakeholders to be part of the project because, as we all know, costs get higher when you introduce requirements later into the project, when you make design changes, uh, et cetera. So the more you know at the beginning of the project, the cheaper the project will be and the closer it'll be to the stakeholders requirements at the end. So what, what do you need to do as a project manager? Well, you need to resolve competing interests. And again, you need to take charge and deal with conf conflicting scenarios. You've got to respect cultural differences, again, because when we're thinking of the scenario for the PMI project, it's a large, long live, distributed, multicultural endeavor worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And you always want to keep stakeholders informed about the true status. So you don't want to say, fine, 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 oops, we fell off a cliff. Okay, so here is another um, product scenario, and I like that it's Acme Technology is the people who always sold the Roadrunner or the Coyote, all those anvils to draw up on the Roadrunner. Doing it, and then it's, uh, 
You shouldn't accept it. Okay, so what is the solution? It doesn't cost the company any additional money, right? They should. Right. They so should it would obviously make the difference to meet the quality metrics. So, um, but we, you know, we don't want to have the failure point that the software wouldn't be able to perform. So we've got to document the issues and present the project, present those to the project sponsor, and then identifying the performance concerns you know, as he now has been made aware of the issue. So basically you need to study the business scenarios and get familiar with questions that test professional and ethical responsibility. So, you know, and obviously this is where you put your project management brain into the loop, you know, and you're going beyond the PMBOK to find out what's going on, you know, in the particular scenario. So, and notice on the questions, you know, at the, at the end, it's like, you know, what should Jim do? So when you've got a big question, look at the answers and, you know, if this was, let's say, a question on the PMI exam, um, you know, make sure that you've got the what should Jim do kind of thing and, and understand that in the context of reading the whole question. Okay, so to summarize this um, chapter, we've got the PMI Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct that you've always got to follow during, during a project and, in fact, anywhere in your life. Um, Obviously, you can contribute to the project management knowledge base by doing a lot of different things, um, a lot of analysis and compiling metrics within your organizations. And if you can let those metrics out into the world and public, publish papers, even better, and think about ways to get PDUs. Again, always be looking at your strengths and weaknesses because just as PMI, and we're going to talk a lot about continuous improvement, we want to continuously improve our ability to perform on projects. We also want to continuously improve our ability as an individual to just be a better person and a better project manager. And again, stakeholders are key to project success. So we always want to keep them informed with the true status and we want, we want them to collaborate and feel as much part of the team as we possibly can. Obviously, there are some people who are very busy that, you know, the president of the company can't have their finger in the pie for every project. So we've got to provide information you know, at the intervals and in the nibbles that are appropriate to that person's level of competency. Um, again, if you become aware of an unethical practice or an issue, then you've got to, you know, get to the root cause and pro provide the facts and reports to the appropriate governing body. Okay, so that's the end of social responsibility. We probably did that faster than we thought. Awesome. And so now we're going to get to the next, we're going to get to the project management framework.